On this episode of Food Culture, John Gadsby gets passionate over bluff oysters. Or do bluff oysters make him get overpassionate? Do you know, I think God eats these. and welcome to Food Culture. I'm John Gadsby and this is Bluff. And believe me, it is Bluff and it's also rough. And we're doing today, you guessed it, what's synonymous with Bluff, yes, oysters. And out here is where they come from. If you look out there, that dim line on the horizon is Ruapuki Island. And further that way, there's another even more dim line and that's Stewart Island and uh, the oyster beds are roughly between Ruapuki and uh, Stewart Island. Uh, the boats aren't out today because it's Saturday and Saturday is their day off. Uh, otherwise they'd be out in this. No, they, they probably wouldn't. They'd probably uh, have another day off because it is somewhat rough out there as you can see. I was brought up around here and uh, bluff oysters are very much part of my earliest memories. They are just beautiful. In fact, I remember the political commentator Keith Ovenden saying once, and he was brought up in England, uh, that there were two reasons he stayed in New Zealand. One was asparagus and the other one was bluff oysters. I think it's a good reason to stay. Now, most people probably think that the locals around here would eat them au naturel, raw, and uh, it's probably the best way to eat them, but uh, we think they do something different, so we're about to go back into Bluff, the township, and uh, see just what the locals do with them. Well, we're here with the lovely Joe, chef at the Anchorage restaurant in the main street of Bluff. And uh, Joe's going to show us uh, how battered oysters are done here in the deep south. Uh, well, what are the secrets, Joe? The first thing obviously you need is oysters, straight off the boat, nice big juicy ones and you've got to remember that oyster flesh is very soft so the cooking time is very minimal. Add a good batter, which is Granny Faye's batter and we put a wee bit of lemonade in it to make it a bit more pliable and all you do is to make sure the batter adheres to the oyster, dip it in a bit of flour, make sure it's all coated and that's pretty much it, into the deep fryer. And just make sure that the, the deep fryer, it's all clean. It's best to have clean fat, obviously, or oil, or whatever you want to use. And that's pretty much it. They are beautiful oysters. Did you hand pick these? Uh, I didn't, no. No, that's pretty much how they're coming at the moment. They've been really, really awesome. What sort of uh, cooking time are we looking at here, Joe? About a minute and a half, two minutes. That short? That short, because the fat's very hot, it's 180 degrees, and um, like I said before, oysters are very soft, their flesh is very soft, so they don't take much to cook at all. You still want to wrap up? Yep, pretty much. You're pretty much just heating them through. Oh, look, absolutely delicious. Okay, this is the finished product. Basically, we just serve them with malt vinegar, a bit of tartar sauce and lemon, and because that's all they need, and that's it. Done. Here we are, sir. Oh, look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful. I'll, I'll tell you what, is there any chance of getting a, a nice, cheeky, crisp little uh, Sauvignon Blanc to go with this? Absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, you can't have 
bluff oysters without a cheeky crisp Sauvignon Blanc, can you? Oh, this is just superb. Oh, look at that. You can tell by the texture that... Oh. That's beautiful. This batter is just so light it virtually flies away. Mm. Do you know, I think God eats these. Oh, that was brilliant. That was indescribable. If you're down this way, it's worth the trip down to Bluff just to come to the Anchorage restaurant here for their oysters, even if you only just have one. or well, you'll have more. Well, this is the oyster fleet, or most of it, uh, lying at berth. Uh, there's some hardy oystermen take to the seas to get these uh, beautiful delicacies, but the, there are other ways to get them. You can, uh, you can dredge for them uh, recreationally, or you can even dive for them. Now, that's interesting. Oysters can be found in shallow bays all along the east coast of the South Island. They can only be called bluff oysters if they come from the Fovo Strait. The season for bluff oysters is from the 31st of March to the 1st of August in the south. Each diver is allowed a daily limit of 50 oysters, or an additional quota can be taken for up to two persons acting in the dive safety capacity. There is a size limit for oysters. They must not pass through a rigid circular metal ring with an inside diameter of 58 millimetres. Regulations for gathering oysters vary throughout the country. Check the Ministry of Fisheries website to ensure you know the regulations for your area. Well, if you're not hungry now, you will be right after the break. The Bluff community hold the annual Bluff Oyster and Food Festival in May. Such is the popularity of oysters that the tickets are sold out well in advance. Part of the celebration involves oyster shucking competitions. They are fiercely competitive between the experts and hugely entertaining amongst the amateurs. Commercial oystering started in the 1860s. The deep oyster beds in Fovo Strait were discovered in late 1879. In the 1986-87 season, there was a disaster when the oysters were struck by the Bonamia parasite. This parasite makes the oysters watery, black and inedible. Fortunately, the beds recovered, but the Bonamia threat wasn't over. Oyster eating competitions also generate huge interest. Kiwis will turn anything into a sport. I just want to welcome everyone to the festival and say, um, don't worry, I haven't changed sides with the uh, red T-shirt. But uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be the highlight of the year and it's great to see so many people here. I met some people on Monday at the Kairu Lounge. I don't know if they're here, but they were Aucklanders who told me they were flying to Christchurch, driving down here, had a camper van, and we're going to spend the weekend here in Bluff. So there's people from all over New Zealand. Have a great time. Looking forward to eating some oysters myself. See you later. Hey, stand in line. Tom season restaurants and bluff oyster lovers race to get the first oysters of the season sometimes using helicopters as a means of delivering this premium delicacy to the plate 
This may explain the sometimes high prices paid for a dozen oysters. We visited oyster scientist Keith Michael at Niwa in Wellington. Keith explains a little about the biology of the bluff oyster. Bluff oysters are hermaphrodites, that means that they're males and females. The males will mature around about 20 millimetres and then they start to spawn as males and females at about 50 millimetres. We asked Keith if the Bonamia parasite was likely to reoccur. We know that Bonamia has been in the fishery for at least 20 years. There have been recurring infections and it's likely that it will cause problems in the future. How long does an oyster live? Oysters can grow to at least 35 years old. We tagged some oysters that were legal size in the 70s, recaptured a few 29 years later. Here's one of them, hadn't grown a millimetre, but it got a lot heavier. 1% um, of the population we estimate will grow older than 46 years. And here's an example of one of the bigger shells that we've got in Bobo Strait, which is massive. We asked Keith if the taste of bluff oysters is unique. Well, taste is a very personal thing, but there are marked differences between where bluff oysters come from and, and other oyster fisheries. Uh, bluff oysters are caught on, um, on clean gravels in, in cold water. Uh, the area is highly productive so they can fatten quite quickly. Um, other fisheries generally are in estuaries which are sandy, muddy bottoms. Um, and when there's a lot of fine sediment, that sometimes inhibits the uh, oyster's ability to feed and put on condition. Working with bluff oysters, do you still like eating them? I love oysters and uh, there's only one way for me and that's fresh straight out of the shell. But uh, I have been known when I've been fortunate enough to have a reasonable supply to, um, to cook them other ways, just gently sautéed in garlic, butter and herbs. After the break, John Gadsby makes his favourite oyster soup. You know, one of the good things about blokes doing the shopping is we know exactly what we want, most of the time. So, the famous Gadsby oyster soup. Uh, first up, I think we'd better get the most important ingredient, uh, the oysters. Oh, thank you very much. That's You're wonderful. Welcome. Straight out of the sea, are they? Yes, they are. Okay. Okay, okay milk. And some uh, flour. And some of this magnificent stuff. And a reusable bag, so we're being environmentally friendly. Bit of butter. Nice crusty French sticks. A bit of parsley, more for colour and movement than anything. And uh, a bit of this just to be on the safe side, chicken stock. John is preparing his soup at the historic Victoria Railway Hotel in Invercargill. Okay, the first bit of making the oyster soup, and uh, I'm going to cheat here a bit, because I'm going to use a blender. So I'll put half of our oysters into the blender. You can, you can do this without a blender by very fine chopping, or say half your oysters. Well, one thing about the oyster juice, the, you used to get oysters with a beautiful juice that came in them, the, with the flavours that came out of the oysters. These days they tend more to shell the oysters or shut the oysters and put a little squirt of very fresh seawater on top of it because it, to, it manages to keep it fresher but it does make them taste very salty. So the best way I've found is to taste the juice and see how salty it is and how oystery it is. No, that's beautiful. It's got a very strong oyster taste. Beautiful oyster taste but it's not too salty. So we'll pour that into our blender as well. There we are, lovely rich juice. And a bit of milk, 
to go in with that. Or not, and give it a rev. Should about do it. Okay, this is the beginnings of the oyster soup, which is a basic roux, which I'm, I'm using butter, about a, about a dessert spoonful of butter. But uh, if you want to get really health conscious of things, you can use oil, olive oil. It's good, but uh, butter's better. I'll just wait till, for that to melt down a wee bit. Yeah, that's about hot enough. I'll put in about half the parsley chopped up and we'll save the other half to the end, give it a bit of a stir around and add some flour. This is about, uh, about a heap dessert spoon, no, yeah, dessert spoon full of flour. Give that a good stir up so there's no lumps in it and it goes into a, a sort of paste. So what you've got at the moment is a a sort of flour, butter and parsley paste which will transform into a roux we hope with the addition of the milk and more stirring and this as soon as the heat goes into it should start to thicken but we don't want it too thick just yet. We've got to add the the oysters, the oyster juice and the milk that's uh, over there in the blender. Okay and here we have the star of the show, the oysters. Gone through the blender. You can also do this by by very fine chopping them and stirring them, but I think this is a good way to do it. Put this back on the heat. Now this doesn't need very much cooking. It's uh, they're very delicate things and I mean the whole thing about oysters I think is less is more whether you're eating, eating them uh, raw au naturel or in batter as we had them earlier. It's less is more. They're such beautiful things you don't need to to muck around with them very much. So that, just give that a bit more. Now I've got to sort of do this next bit by by feel in a way, because just get it to a consistency that you want. One of the things I don't like is a oyster soup, which is the consistency of porridge, which you get it to like in a, a number of places. Not many oysters and a lot of thin. Yeah, that's going beautifully nice and thick and now. I'm gonna actually add some chicken stock here. This is an option. You can also use uh, the, the fish stock, or seafood stock. This will just make it go a little bit further and uh, it's lovely rich stock. It'll just give it a bit more I don't mean bulk in terms of, it'll give it a little bit more liquid bulk. Put a little bit more in. Remember we still have the oysters to go into this yet. That looks good, you could just about eat that as it is. Our second half of the stars, the rough chopped oysters. Now these don't need very long at all, so you've got to watch this. if you cook them too long they turn into little balls of, of rubber. That consistency is quite good. <clears throat> I'll just have a wee bit more a touch of milk. If this goes too thick you adjust the consistency with an addition of stock or milk and the final touch because the wiper. A little bit more cheeky Sauvignon Blanc. Nice. So yeah, that's a pretty good consistency. If you're using fish stock uh, instead of chicken stock, as I am here, 
be a little bit careful because you don't want the soup to end up tasting fishy because it, it should taste of oysters, not of fish, especially if you're using uh, home bread stock. That's looking pretty good. Okay, well this is looking pretty good. I'll just taste it for seasoning. Yeah, it can do the tiny bit of the sea salt and a bit of a dose of black pepper. You can add a bit of lemon, squeezed lemon juice at this stage if you want, but I'm always a little bit scared of it because it uh, tends to curdle the milk. So if you are doing it, be careful. Might be better to put a little squeeze in just before you serve it. And speaking of which, this is about ready to serve. very little and uh, they were very popular. It's, a, it's an expensive soup, I suppose, but it's, it's worthwhile. It, it is absolutely beautiful. It is the essence of the oyster. Well, I always went blind when I was about 10 and uh, there was an outraged editorial in the Southern Times when uh, the price of oysters went up one season from I think it, it was a shilling a dozen, that shows how far away it was to her. So they put it 10 cents a dozen to 13 cents a dozen, a dozen. And uh, the editor of the Southern Times was very angry about this and said, this is putting bluff oysters beyond the pocket of the working man. And it always struck me because uh, Having come out from England, uh, oysters and the working man were things that were used in the same sentence. So uh, mm. I hope you enjoy it. Prices have changed a lot since, but uh, mm. 10 cents a dozen, can you imagine? Now, many of us Kiwis have a wok in the kitchen in the cupboard somewhere, but do we really know much about the wok? Rumour has it it was invented in Asia, right, in Asia around the 1500s. What I like about these guys, or this way of cooking in a wok, is everything is quick, everything's fresh, it's, it's just beautiful. What sort of wok should I get? I mean, are there different types, different sizes? Who should I talk to? You can have a party in one of these. Have a party in one of these. It's gonna be fun. 